Hey folks, Jim O'Brien here, also known as the uh, Sky Skater FPV, and uh, today is Dads with Drones. So, uh, some of you may know uh, me personally, I'm not only a dad, but I'm also a grandfather, and uh, you also know that I spend a substantial amount of money on drones. So, uh, dogs, drones, and classic cars, that's kind of my gig, but uh, I tell you what, I'd like to, the purpose of today's video would be to help some of you that are new to the drone world that have not purchased one or if you've already purchased one but it, you know you don't even know how to fly it and it's been sitting in the box and you're trying to figure out what to do next um, this would hopefully be to give you some insight on uh, some of the things the trial and errors that I've experienced and uh, hopefully ways for you to save some money um, and save some time so um, just stay tuned and uh, we'll, we'll walk through this pretty quick here so um, uh, let's start with the introduction uh, of drones. So drones, quadcopters, uh, basically most of them are going to be four blade uh, or four motored um, uh, RC vehicles with a remote control. And when you come down to remote control, you've got two kinds. You've got what they call ready to fly, which is usually bound to one remote, one drone. Okay, um, Or you have what's called bind and fly which is one remote bound to multiple drones, which is my, my preferred method. Uh, obviously, the, the problem with your ready-to-flies, and, and as cool as some of them are, um, you end up with just a, a plethora of different stuff to have to drag around, and it's really impractical when you're going to the field or the park or ready to go flying, trying to catch you know, video, whatever it is that you're doing. To, to lug all that stuff around, and believe me, I've done it, but <laughs> uh, when a buddy of mine introduced me to the bind and fly world, it really just blew my mind. So the first ready-to-fly quad that I got was the uh, Wakaria uh, Furious F215 uh, as far as a racing drone, and the very first ready-to-fly drone that I got, which kind of got me into the hobby in general, was the uh, Propel. So uh, this is the Propel Cloud Rider, really simple. A lot of guys started with the SEMA series. Um, me personally, uh, if you read my or uh, watch my evolution of a drone video, you know, a drone pilot video, it explains on, you know, I, this is an accident. I went to Ross, I went to go buy a pair of shoes. They didn't even have the shoes that I wanted and I ended up walking it out with, you know, obviously some of the discount stuff um, that they had. And then once I started with this and then one of the little micro drones, I just kind of got hooked and it was downhill or uphill, whatever you want to call it from there. But, um, you know, they're cool. Uh, the thing is, is that when the holidays come, I know that at Ross, Marshalls, most of the, um, you know, discount store, shopping stores, uh, they had drones everywhere. And even now you go to Walmart, Target, I mean, everybody and their mom is trying to make some type of a drone. So if you just want to play with the toys and you just, you know, you got the money to spend and, you know, you're, you're kind of a, what I call a consumer like me, you know, ah, you know, hey, it's time to go buy something because I got money burning a hole in my pocket. Well, then you're going to spend a lot of money on these toy drones and then what will happen, like most of them, uh, within two to three months, you know, uh, if that, it'll be sitting in one of these bags or something else. So, you know, I've got stuff that's been given to me uh, that I just never even, I'm sure everybody's seen this one over at Marshalls, you know, hey. Um, but I, I've got stuff that's been given to me that I haven't even flown yet just because, you know, anybody that's adamant in the drones, they're going to fly the stuff that they like to fly. So, uh, but yeah, I got a bag literally with, you know, all this stuff and I've got, you know, multiple remote controllers, I got wires, I got chargers, I got all this different stuff. Now, uh, of all the... Um, toy drones, I suppose, that are out there on the market. I personally think Propel is probably the cooler company that's out there. Not only did they have the Cloud Rider that I started with, but then they've got the little um, micro drone, which is kind of an introduction to a throttle-based controller as opposed to what's called an auto hold or an altitude hold. So an altitude hold is, you know, you tell that thing to stay right here and for the most part it's going to stay right there minus wind variations or whatever. Uh, you tell it to go up, it goes up. You tell it to go down, it goes down. Left, right, rotate, etc. Um, a throttle managed uh, drone 
will be completely different in the fact that the throttle is actually what will keep that drone adrift uh, or uh, afloat, excuse me, flying, and then uh, it'll be the uh, multiple inputs from there on, on what will change the characteristics of the flight. But uh, for an altitude hold drone like that, um, needless to say, prepare, well, not needless to say, but Propel is also the company that made my favorite toy ever which is the X-Wing fighter drone. It's the Propel uh, X-Wing fighter drone. They've got uh, three of these in the series. They've got the X-Wing fighter, the TIE fighter, uh, and the uh, little speeder bike, the little Stormtrooper on a speeder bike. I've got all three, plus I've got backups because I'm a collector, so I've got them vintage, unsealed, or, or still sealed in the boxes. That those will never get open, um, and I'll have those off the side, but then I've got each of the three of them as well because I want it to fly, and I'm, uh, they're actually really cool. Uh, flying little drones. So, uh, but here's the pro the uh, controller that you get with the Propel uh, X-wing fighter. It's kind of a, I would say, almost a model grade uh, or getting into a model grade ho uh, hobby controller as opposed to just the toy grade controllers that are out there. But when you get into what's called the uh, when we get away from the toys, okay. Uh, and part of the reason why I chose the uh, Wakara F215 as my initial racer was the versatility that it had. So even though it was a ready-to-fly drone, um, like it was bound automatically already to the Devo 7, which is actually a really cool controller. I mean, it's it's got all the channels that you'll need for a normal um, quadcopter operation. Um, and actually, the gimbals were pretty smooth. I mean, everything was really cool on this Devo 7. Um, it was really easy to use as far as the air mode, the different mixes, uh, you know, arm, uh, which was the down and to the left, um, and then you can get into what they call clean flight, um, which was the initial, well not the initial, but kind of the initial real mainstream um, computer system that these guys were using in order to update their flight controllers. And the flight controller, each one of them, each drone is going to have a flight controller which will adjust the characteristics, basically it adjusts your inputs and it uh, goes into your PIDs. Um, and the way it was explained to me is basically it's a before, during, and after as far as what the anticipation is going to be um, for the movement of the quad based off of what your inputs are. So. Um, really cool, really tech, uh, technical stuff, that's for sure. Uh, most, of the, uh, most of the guys that are doing this are substantially smarter than me, but uh, I love to fly, which is kind of my forte. I'm definitely more of a pilot than I am a builder, but, um, but I have soldered a few things together. So, um, uh, Propel also makes the Battle X drones. You can find those over at Walmart. Um, I think you can still find them online too. This was a kind of a cool Christmas gift just in the fact that it's a throttle controlled so it is going to be throttle management. You have to learn how to fly the quad right um, and then it's got the little lasers so you can actually shoot at each other. So just like the, um, the Star Wars series, uh, these little guys you can actually shoot at each other and then after the third hit it falls down. I mean, kind of cool little thing. I think these were like 40, 50 bucks. For both of them so again toys you know not too bad now um, one thing for me that I was concerned about of course as a dad and a grandfather was safety and that's why I really really like uh, what they call the tiny whoops okay now tiny whoops <coughs> excuse me they were a 65 75 and then 85 millimeter um, drones uh, that are all going to be smaller than these guys right here and they're what I would call fully enclosed so I mean it's it's really really hard like I have yet to like I've hit my dog I've hit uh, people I've face punched people with it you know just whatever uh, it's it's next impossible to hurt somebody with one of these so that's why I really liked it obviously because safety is going to be a number one concern and then of course the cool thing about what they call the tiny whoop is that it uses the mainstream controllers. Now when I say mainstream controllers, because we were talking about bind and fly. Well, bind and fly is basically you've got two main, um, what they call protocols out there. I mean, you have Fly Sky, you have um, uh, Free Sky, you've got the, uh, the Spectrum, um, and then you've got a couple other variations um, that, that uh, some of these other companies have made. But for the most part, the two mainstream 
uh, protocols are going to be FR Sky, uh, Free Sky, and Spectrum. I personally chose Free Sky. The way it was explained to me was almost like Apple and Android. I still don't even know which one's which between the which one was Apple, which one was Android. I just know that I personally chose Free Sky. Some of the models that I was looking at uh, purchasing, uh, they all had Free Sky controllers, or they were capable of Free Sky controllers. Uh, specifically, some of the Emacs versions. So uh, that's why I went that direction. But here's a quick little look before we get into the Pine and Fly stuff of the Wakera F. 215. Now this is a cool little racer and again part of the reason that I chose to go this guy is that it does have an F3 flight controller but it is upgradable which means that you can flash this and as opposed to having just what they call the clean flight software is I can now upgrade this to the beta flight software. Now beta flight is what all the, the modern guys are using. They're either using beta flight or they're using um, uh, Butterflight, which is one of the newer versions. So like Freestyle Pilots, some of them will use the uh, racing um, uh, systems that are out there. Uh, otherwise, you're using Betaflight, um, KISS, NAS, um, and then the, um, uh, like I say, the Butterflight. I personally uh, have liked Betaflight. Um, I used it. It's, I've messed with it a little bit. I, I, I'm, I'm a simplicity guy, so I kind of like the simplicity. Although I've seen some of the videos that have come out with Butterfly, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a cool system. But you know, um, when we get into the toys and the hobby portions, you know, there's really two types of I, I would say uh, drone uh, families that are out there. So one is going to be like more like the hobby racing, hey, I'm flying around in the outdoors, I'm just doing this to have fun, um, versus then you have the, uh, what they call aerial photography drones. Now, when you get into aerial photography drones, that's a whole nother world. Um, you know, you have some people like Casey, uh, Nezit, and some of the other fans that'll say, oh, DJI is the only way to go, and I agree to a certain extent. DJI makes a phenomenal product. Um, their Spark, their Mavic Pro, I've had their Mavic Pro uh, since since it came out, um, love it. But I did start with another company previous to that, which was Parrot. Now, depending on what you're looking to do with your aerial drone or your aerial photography drone, that Parrot was actually pretty cool simply because, uh, again, it's simplicity of design. It does use a Wi-Fi signal. There's places that I can fly to that uh, where if somebody else had what they call a TIF or a, a temp or temporary flight restriction TFR um, in a certain area, if I knew that I was within a certain proximity of that, with DJI products, it's impossible. Like, the system won't let you fly the drone. Um, with the Parrot, it would still let me. So, case in point, we had the... Um, boat races that were here in Tri-Cities. They had a TFR in place, DJI did, but they hadn't removed that T, uh, TFR um, after the boat races were over. So even after everybody was gone, they still hadn't removed it. I couldn't fly my DJI product for uh, at least a, a, almost a day after, but I could fly my Parrot still just because of the, the connectivity. Um, furthermore, they have what's called an FPV, which is a fir uh, first person view. That's where you take your phone like this, and then you just pop that into the goggles and then you'll be able to see first person what that drone is seeing which that's what most of the um, most people will do now I mean, there's some people that still like uh, what they call line of sight so these will be a line of sight drone needs to say there's no camera so this is all line of sight you're flying within what you can see and then obviously um, you know if you get turned around then you can get a little challenging from there that's where headless mode and some of these others come into play um, now FPV which is again your first person view um, is gonna have a camera on it so whether it be that kind of camera like a foxier camera same thing on my Hawk 5 uh, foxier camera um, this uh, this little guy, I guess, in theory, would be uh, considered an FPV because it does have a camera. It does have an app, although uh, I've taken this thing up in the air a couple times, and you know, like I said, once you <laughs> once you've had really cool drones, it's kind of hard to go with the cheapy toy ones. So, um, and then I'll give you a little little insight here onto the goggle options. So here is my Tyrannus QX7. Okay. I modified this slightly because I put hall gimbals in here and then I put different uh, stick ends on there. But uh, this is the controller that not only talks to you. Welcome to OpenTX. 
but it's also got all of my models on there. So if I come here and I go into my model selection, you can see that I have multiple models on there. And then I can add, I don't want to say an infinite number, but I can add, um, you know, quite a few of them as well. Now everything from the uh, operation to the feel to everything, uh, this has been definitely my controller of choice. I wouldn't fly with anything else. I do I have flown with the Devo 7. Uh, again, decent controller, but once you fly with something like this, like it's kind of hard to go back just from the functionality standpoint. Although I really do like the gimbals on the uh, Devo 7. And it's kind of hard because the Wakara F215 is flying clean flight, which is an older software, and that's kind of a, I don't know, a different racing drone compared to the ones that I fly off of the QX7. So I don't want to necessarily uh, say that it's a better uh, controller, but uh, between the combinations of, of the Devo 7 and the Wakara product versus what I could do with the QX7 and like I say, my multiple FR Sky uh, products, um, it's just night and day. So uh, very first, first recommendation is that if you're going to go mainstream, if you're going to do this as a, as a consistent hobby and you want to get into FPV or racing hobby drones, then pick yourself up one of these guys right here. Again, Tyrannus QX7. They now have the X-Lite, which is also a really cool controller. That's more of a video game style controller. Um, they have the X9, which is the full size controller, a little bit more expensive. And then they have the QX7S which is basically this same thing, it's just a different shell. Uh, it comes pre-installed with the hall gimbals and then a few other um, features uh, with it as well. But um, definitely a must if you're gonna do anything in regards to Tiny Whoops um, or any other bind and fly uh, uh, drones. Um, here's a set of what they call Amway. These are the Amway Commander. These are the diversity version ones. Diversity because they've got two different um, uh, antennas right here so basically it'll pick up both your linear patch and then also your circular so that way you've got one and one that are sitting here so if you watch some of the YouTube videos we'll see those guys that have got stuff that's hanging off the side of the goggles that's what those are is they're going to be the different antennas that they can uh, tune in with I personally uh, fly right hand circularized polarized or circular polarized and I've got uh, the TBS um, TBS connector, I've got this Amway, and I've got like five or six other ones. I've got some left-hand circular polarized ones that came with my Hawk 5. I picked this up over at Regionals because it was a patch for left-hand circular polarized. So what that means is that this is putting out a 5.8 gigahertz uh, transmission out of, the, out of the VTX, which is the video transmitter. And if you have a right hand circular polarized you can be on one bandwidth and have somebody else on a similar bandwidth on a left hand circular polarized and not have that feed uh, bleed feed so that's why they they do that at, at racing events is they'll have some people on right hand circular polarized and some on left hand circular polarized but um tiny whoops uh, Beta FPV happens to be my tiny whoop of choice. That's the first one that I started with. I'm a primaholic, so I'm all about Amazon. Most of the stuff I've gotten was off of Amazon, so you certainly have the ability to do that. But let me show you how cool this little guy is. Atomic City Drone Club. That's who I hang out with. And uh, this guy is a little 65 millimeter whoop, that's the batteries, the little one cell uh, batteries, they're LiPo batteries, just like most of these will run a LiPo battery. And I think bang for the buck, these are probably one of the cooler things since sliced bread. Um, basically for about a hundred bucks, you can pick up uh, one of these in any variation size, whether that be 65, 75, 85 millimeter, um, most of these you can get already with a receiver into it so you can bind it to whatever transmitter you have, whether that be the FR Sky or the Spectrum uh, DX series. Um, but those little guys you can fly in and out of places that you can't fly. Other ones obviously they're indoor, you don't have to register them with FAA. I mean they're just, they're super super cool and we actually do races with those um, in our drone club. So. Um, 
I'm going to kind of wrap a few things up because I just wanted to give you a broad spectrum as far as some of the experiences that I've, I've had because I've literally got everything from spending the 500 bucks to the DJI goggles to, you know, having the Crystal Sky. Um, I've got the whole Parrot Bebop 2 Adventure package, which would be this guy right here. It actually came in a really cool backpack. And this is... R2B2 as you can see from the decals so but there's the FPV goggles that come in it's got uh, chargers it's got batteries um, these are uh, 2700 milliamp batteries so they're pretty big they're literally about twice the size as far as capacity that uh, most of my racing drones will, will run and then here's the uh, Wi-Fi uh, what they call sky controller too so uh, it's actually got really good range I've taken this thing out to a full two kilometers before uh, all line of sight uh, I've done that over the water I've done that through the through the mountains um, so really versatile bird uh, it does shoot uh, I don't want to say only shoot but it does shoot limited to 1080p and there is no obstacle detection on that drone which means that if you are running straight into something it is going to hit something so you need to be very careful on where you're flying what you're doing because uh, you know, I've lost one so um, Mavic Pro can't have a video without talking about the Mavic Pro so here is the original Mavic Pro this is the um, uh, <laughs> version one so uh, I turned this into what I call the Blackbird Pro uh, just from again the decals I'm a nerd yep X X-Men as you can see Sky Skater yeah that's me so but the Mavic Pro is a folding drone that comes out like this so you saw it was really compact in the first place and then it comes out completely like this this thing will shoot in 4k and I've gotten some just absolutely amazing, amazing videos. I have taken this uh, all the way up to 1,500 uh, feet because I was within 400 feet of an obstacle and I went to be 400 feet above it. That obstacle happened to be Snow Palmy Pass, um, or actually it was uh, Stevens Pass, excuse me, and, uh, and that was out in Leavenworth. So um, if you haven't seen that... Um, that video, the Leavenworth video, uh, you should watch it. It's gorgeous. I got some really good shots of the mountains. And this thing was flying in 32 degree weather at 1,500 feet. And I tell you what, it performed like a champ. I have had, I think, maybe one, and I wouldn't even call it a malfunction, but kind of malfunction, um, where I had lost signal and I had to bring it down and kind of reset the system. And it was my fault because I didn't run the update. So, but aside from that, it's literally been flawless. Here's the controller. I popped this thing open like this, and then I kind of got um, well, pretty pretty easy as far as the Velcro with my Crystal Sky. So now I can just go like this, and I've got a full setup there with my um, DJI controller in and my Crystal Sky. Uh, run a little USB cord uh, out from here, and the Crystal Sky, as far as uh, clarity is concerned, it's said to be twice as bright as the brightest cell phone that's out there and I mean I, I like it you know I, I, I'm sold so I think it was worth the money and uh, and there you go so um, part of the other real big reason I love this Crystal Sky is see yeah, it's got all the imports right there it's got the uh, different ports for you to put different medias so that means that I can take my little black uh, box that I've got all my other videos stored and I can take the SD cards uh, out of both my uh, racing drone and out of my um, my Amway goggles and I can review the footage before I go and start so if I'm just in the field and I got you know videos that I want to get rid of real quick I can just come in here zip 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 see what came out figure out which ones I want to delete so that way when I go to do final editing at home I don't have as much of those to go through um, and I can save space same thing if I'm limited on space I can pop my SD card in here real quick fine-tune uh, whichever ones that I don't want and eliminate those to make room for for the other ones as opposed to having to get all the way home get on my computer and then try to go through the, the, the contents of the SD card at that time so um, 
once again, I really appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. It's been really fun for me. Like I say, this is series one of Dads with Drones. This was just a brief uh, overview on, on, on some of the stuff that I've got going on. And like I say, we'll be doing uh, multiple parts after this. Uh, go a little bit more in depth on some of the, the models that I have, why I chose them, where I fly them, how I fly them, how you can get into this, how you can find your local drone club, how you can get AMA um, uh, certified, uh, how you can get set up with multi-GP and find other people that are looking to do the same thing in your area. Um, I would highly admi uh, advise that you look up uh, a drone club in your local area, go to Facebook, um, type in drone club, see what sh shows up. You'd be surprised. They're, they're, we're all over the place, so uh, chances are you've got a couple, uh, a couple of them right in your neck of the woods. But um, the number one thing I think that we can uh, try to take away from this video, that I hope everybody can take away from the video, other than the safety of making sure that you're selecting the right one, uh, not going to injure your kids, not going to, you know, I'm not too worried about. Uh, pissing off the neighbors because we're going to do that um, but uh, kids, pets, you know, th those are always going to be the number one safety concern and then a very very close second is not throwing your money away on stuff that you're never going to use so depending on what you're going to do try not to be a consumer, try not to just go you know, oh hey I'm going to buy that just because I'm going to buy that do a little bit of research, check out this video, I'll leave some links for some of the uh, other videos that I looked at as far as products as well, I think they were really good insights as far as reviews on some of not only the new stuff that's coming out like the Mavic Pro 2 which has now come out and uh, but also some of the stuff that had, had come out previous to that and uh, like I say, I really hope everybody has a good time get airborne, uh, clash, uh, what's that, fly, uh, build, fly, <laughs> crash, repeat, and uh, don't hit anybody.